All right, guys, great to see you back. We are the Dairyland Legends. I'm Tyler. And I'm Isaac. Today we got tip-ups. That's right. We're gonna show you guys how to rig up tip-ups any way you want them. Uh, we're gonna show you a couple different ways. We got a few different walleye setups and some northern setups. We're excited to show you guys. Well, without, sit down, I gotta say something. Without further ado, let's get to it. All right, guys, first rig we wanna show you guys. Uh, we're gonna start with the, this is just a good old clam tip up here. If you want a cheaper tip up, um, but can still catch you some fish, go with the good old clam. Nice yellow flag on there. And uh, so this is one of Tyler's favorite setups for walleyes. Now what he runs on his, if you, is, if you can see this, Tyler runs, he's got a ball bearing swivel on there, just a snap swivel for all of his leaders. And what he likes about that is he can just, if, say if he wants to fish for Northerns one day mainly, he can switch out, throw a 25 pound leader or 60 pound if he's fishing for really big fish. And, uh, and then he's good to go. But for walleyes, Tyler prefers 10 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, what we like to use for our floral is we got a Trilene XL, 100% uh, fluorocarbon. It's the professional grade. Um, what we like about it, it's super thin. Uh, fluorocarbon is a little less stretch and it's virtually invisible to those fish. So it's really gonna help with those finicky walleyes on days where they're not eager to bite. And uh, as you can see here, Tyler runs a split shot up his leader. And we typically like to run them about anywhere from eight to 10 inches, depending on the day. I believe it's a number four or three split shot right there. If it'll focus there. And uh, and then we got, he runs a number 10 treble up, just like that. And that's, that's the walleye rig. Um, Fishing walleyes, you want to fish anywhere from a foot to two feet off the bottom. And uh, yeah, that's a really good one right there. All right, our other setup is the premium. This is what I like to run. Good old beaver dam tip up. It's the best tip up money can buy. What I love and why this is the best tip up, if I can get the spool out here. These have the smoothest spool on the market. They're just like butter. I mean, the fish doesn't even know they're <laughs> taking your minnow. So it's pretty cool. And uh, there's no better feeling than seeing a beaver dam up. So what I got on here, um, a lot of people will actually use Fraybill tip-up lights like this. You can purchase them anywhere from seven to $10. Get them online. Um, and those work great. Um, but I'm kind of a little old fashioned and I like to put on reflectors and uh, you can, it's just regular old reflector tape approved by the DOT. You can get it at Fleet Farm or any auto parts store. And I just cut little squares for my flag and put it on both sides like that. And uh, I got another one down here. And the reason I have two reflectors on is because when this flag is down, when I shine a, a spotlight at it, I can see two reflectors and when this flag goes up and I shine my spotlight at night I can clearly see two reflectors vertical and then I know I have a flag so if you don't want to spend money on batteries and um, these will last you forever go ahead and use reflectors I actually don't use swivels to tie my leaders on this right here is a seamless uh, my brother calls it a square knot, and uh, the reason I tie my leaders on like this, I can take it off easily. I can show you guys that in another video. Um, if you say you're fishing shallow water, like three feet, fishing for pike or whatever under the ice, that swivel a lot of time will get caught up in here because you can't have that much line out when you're fishing that shallow. And with this, what this allows you to do is it allows you to reel up and only have you know about this much line out you know two or three feet and when the fish is pulling that line out they're not going to feel this as it goes through the spool 
Now we'll have back to what we got set up here. Um, what I like to run, I like my leaders a little longer, especially fishing in clear water in the winter time. So I got mine in about six feet. Um, and the same, I run the 10 pound fluorocarbon. There it is again, in case you missed it the first time. Um, Trilene 100% XL. Um, and the reason I chose the XL is because it feels just like mono. Mono is a lot more flexible than fluorocarbon. And uh, I find that this type of fluorocarbon resists abrasion a lot better. So, and I also run my split shot. I think that's a number four or three I have on there. I think it's a three. Um, and I run that same eight to 10 inches up. And difference between Tyler and I, I actually prefer to run a number one uh, octopus hook. Um, this is black, but you can also run, uh, we got these pink ones by Eagle Claw. Just the number one needle point octopus. And we also got red ones. Um, it's really personal preference. I find that I catch just as many on red and black or whatever. The color doesn't seem to matter um, as much. So, um, yeah, I prefer to fish about a foot, foot and a half off the bottom. And uh, it works pretty well. So, beaver dam combined with a single hook, 10 pound fluorocarbon, you should be set up. Next important part, uh, we use Woodstock line. You can get it at Fleet Farm, Shields, wherever you buy fish and stuff. Um, I prefer the 25 pound test. Um, I believe Tyler prefers the 50. Um, it's kind of personal preference, but uh, this line seems to work pretty well. We never really have any issues with it. So there you go. Okay guys, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I run for my Northern setups. Um, so here I run the Frey Bills, unlike Isaac who prefers the Beaver Dams. Um, I will admit that the Beaver Dam does have a really nice spool, but to me, it's not worth the extra twenty bucks for for a smoother spool because I don't I don't lose that much more fish because of the Frey Bill, in my opinion, um, than the Beaver Dam. Uh, the other thing I like about this is that it's got the two hooks here, so it's a lot easier for me to spool it up in the in the winter time when I'm wearing gloves. On the Beaver Dams, you have to use your your um, finger like this to spool it. And for me, that's just too hard. So I just prefer, um, I just prefer the fragles because of those handles, those pegs. Um, next, like Isaac said, I'm running, on this one, I believe it's 50 pound um, woodstock line, tip up line. That's that black stuff. And then connected to that, I have just a normal barrel swivel. And then hooked up to that, I have a quick snap. So what that allows me to do is um, depending on what I'm fishing for, if I'm fishing for walleye northern, I can just take that quick snap, take it off, and then I have a swivel to hook up on a different lead or two. So that's just helpful because, I mean, I only have, I don't have that many tip-ups, so, but I do have all these different leaders here. So depending on what I'm fishing for, I can just change up my leader instead of having to retie. Speaking of leaders, what I'm running here for my leader, this is... Um, basically my standard you know if i'm going local in western wisconsin at these smaller inland lakes i uh, tend to run 25 pound and this is the trialing extra tough and i got the low vis it's stained because a lot of the lakes around here aren't very clear they're pretty stained water um so i feel that like this does really well for me uh just running a big split shot i don't know what size it is i just run i just run really big split shots i don't know if you can see those but it's got to be enough so where the minnow, the minnow can't pull up all the way over here or all the way over there. It's got to stay relatively in the same spot. And then lastly, right here, I'm running a number four hook. This is just a cheap eagle claw hook. Um, obviously, um, gamakatsu hooks are better or mustad hooks are pretty good too. But this is just a, one of the cheaper eagle claw hooks. My next setup here uh, is kind of a fun one. A lot of guys don't use these. But like on the last tip up, I am using 40 pound woodstock line followed by a 25 pound leader. But on the end of my leader, I have, it's called a predator rig from Northland. And basically how you use it is you hook one of those hooks in the head of the minnow and you hook one of the hooks in the tail or near the tail of the minnow. 
and basically you can use a live bait or dead bait. If you use live bait, the fl the flashers move around and it just draws attention. And uh, if you use dead bait, it just sits there and they uh, they can see the blades from afar and it's kind of an, an attractant. Lately, I've had really good luck with this one. Um, they've been hitting this one more often than the just the plain treble. So, and this was actually a pretty big size. I believe these are number one hooks. This is the biggest size predator rig that they make. And so, yeah, that's just an option for you guys to try out. I don't know if it's just my luck or what, but this rig has been really hot lately. And then here's my final setup. Um, since when you're fishing for Northern, you always have a chance at musky. And I've experienced this a lot lately too. I This year, just this year alone, I've been snapped off by three big muskies. Um, just because I had 25 pound line. So this one I'm running a little thicker and you can do this for big northern or big musky or anything if you're fishing for like a trophy predator fish. This is kind of like what I what I like to run. It's a 60 foot leader and it's just uh, f j Japanese floral. You can't go wrong with, with that stuff. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, you can't break this. And in fact, uh, I just won a tournament uh, a couple days ago uh, for northern on this on this exact setup. And just like the other one, it's just a number four hook and a, and a decent sized split shot. Sorry guys, I realized I slipped up earlier. I did not mean a 60 foot leader. I meant 60 pound test leader. And this is what I'm running. Like I showed you earlier, it's 60 pound, 60 pound test Japanese floral. Sorry for the, for the confusion. Isaac touched on it a little bit, but I do like to run my Frago lights at night. Um, basically how they work is the tip up will sit down like this. When it's in the water, it'll sit down. And then when the flag goes up, the light starts blinking and then you can see it at night instead of having to use the reflectors. Um, I prefer this because at night, a lot of times I don't bring a spotlight with, so it's kind of, um, just a, it's just an extra thing to bring. So I think these are just more hands-free and a lot easier to use. Depending on how clear the water is and how finicky the, the fish are, I will go down to 20 pound Berkeley Vanish. It's never done me wrong, it's, it's cheap. Um, so that's just another option if you're if you're not fishing for a trophy fish or if you're not that scared of getting snapped off. Uh, one thing to remember when you're using this is that you just gotta finesse the fish a little bit more. You can't just horse them in. You gotta be a little bit more. Um, you gotta have a little bit more finesse. Like Isaac showed in his in his bit, um, I run the swivel and the quick snap, and uh, I'm gonna show you what I what I run here. So basically, it's just a size. I run a size seven or, or similar barrel swivel from Eagle Claw or um, VMC or whoever, just something cheap. And then to that, I uh, run a size 10 um, barrel swivel quick snap. And like I said, that allows me to exchange leaders. And I'll show you, I store my leaders on this thing. I believe it's called a tackle buddy. And literally I just, I can hook my leaders up to here. And when I take one off, I can just take one off here and replace it. So um, yeah, that's kind of how I run my Northern setups. One thing we forgot to mention is on your tip-ups, always have some form of identification. If you leave them out, I, I just put my initials and my phone number. Uh, that just helps if you if you lose a tip-up or something, if somebody finds it, it gives you a chance to, to get it back. So, and then it helps you count your lines too. So, so if the DNR comes out, they know whose line is who. So just kind of a helpful tip. Always have your initials or your tip-ups marked somehow. All right, guys. Well, that was all of our information we have for you today. Uh, stay tuned. We will be getting out on the ice tomorrow. Uh, hopefully filming a video for you guys. Uh, tell them what, what's planned for tomorrow, Tyler. What do we got? Uh, we got class in the morning, but uh, after that, we're going to go to a lake, um, Polk County, Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, we're going to see if we can hook up to some tip-up fish. Uh, we're going to go from northern, kind of in the afternoon, and then uh, right around dusk, we're going to move, uh, move a little deeper and see if we can't find some walleye. Please subscribe to the channel, guys. It helps us out a lot, and uh, we hope it helps you out. Um, stay tuned for some more great content.